Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Tonya Lalo and I'm walking you through the chemistry course. In today's lesson, we want to look at sulfur and its compound. Sulfur and its compound. While we're looking at sulfur and its compound, we'll look at sulfur, the uses of sulfur. We'll look at an hydrogen sulfide. We'll look at sulfides generally. Then we'll talk about sulfur 4 oxide, then sulfur 6 oxide. Then we'll talk about trioxosulfate 4 acid. Then also we'll consider the trioxosulfate 4s. Of course, those are the salts of the trioxosulfate 4 acid. And then we'll look at the tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. And we look at the tetraoxosulfate 6, that is the salts of the tetraoxosulfate 6 acids. And we will also consider hydrogen tetraoxosulfate 6. It's a particular interesting um, situation of an acid salt formation. All right, let's begin. Let's begin with sulfur. What is sulfur? Sulfur is one of the oldest known to man substance, it's one of the oldest known elements. It is known to be a solid. It exists in natural state in solid form. Uh, it has a yellow coloration. Uh, it can be found as deposits about 200 meters below the Earth's crust in different locations around the world. Physical properties of sulfur include the fact that it is insoluble in water. It is a yellow solid. It is a very bad conductor of electricity and it. It has a melting point of about 119 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of about 444 degrees Celsius. Um, sulfur exists basically in two kinds of ways. In two kinds of ways, we have a crystalline sulfur and we have the amorphous sulfur. The crystalline sulfur can be classified into two. We have the monoclinic sulfur and the rhombic sulfur. The monoclinic sulfur and the rhombic sulfur. Each of them have their individual structures. On the screen about now, you've seen the structure of both the monoclinic and the rhombic structure. The rhombic structure is having a kind of a shape as like an octagon. It has an octagonal shape. It has a bright yellow um, appearance. While the monoclinic sulfur is, uh, it has a needle-like shape and has an ember color appearance. Of course, um, the monoclinic um sorry the rhombic the rhombic sulfur exists between the temp uh, at temperatures lower than 69 degrees celsius 69 degrees celsius while temperatures between 69 degrees celsius and 116 degrees celsius we do have the monoclinic sulfur the monoclinic sulfur now i'm talking about the other aspect of sulfur we talked about um, the amorphous sulfur we have what the one would describe as the amorphous sulfur and one would describe as the plastic sulfur these sulfurs are shapeless um of course the crystalline sulfurs when you pour them you melt you melt your sulfur that's the molten sulfur you pour it into a plate and you allow it to cool you see the crystal the crystals of the sulfur would come out but in a plastic sulfur you allow it to cool in water and it just form the sulfur like it's a rubber plastic or something so let's talk about some of the uses of sulfur some of the uses of sulfur sulfur has very many uses it is used in the making of several different compounds uh, is used in the process of um, developing acids some acids it is an acidic substance so we use it in making of some acids it is also a very good oxidizing agent it's a very good oxidizing agent it is used in the treatment of some um medical illnesses uh, um, such as um skin infections and the likes so in this particular lesson we've quickly brief and um, we've briefly considered sulfur and the uses of sulfur in a short while some questions will be displayed on your screen please do attempt then and we want to, we want to know what you understand from what has been taught in this lesson so far so we'll see in a few minutes welcome back so Let's look at um, hydrogen sulfide. Um, hydrogen sulfide is a particular gas, is a gaseous substance. Um, it exists, it can exist in nature. And of course, it is, um, it is, um, other, it, sorry, it's not odorless. It is colorless and it has a rotten egg smell. 
that's a rotten egg smell um let's look more into arrays of it guys it contains two molecules of hydrogen one molecule one molecule of sulfur it is produced both laboratorily and industrially by reacting a metal sulfate with an acid so in this particular case we can have um hydrochloric acid reacted with iron sulfate and it will give you iron chloride and hs h2s which actually is a gas it is a gas it can be liquefied of course the gas is very very poisonous and it has a density of about 1.18 that of air it is moderately soluble in water and it turns it burns with a blue is a pale blue flame it burns with a pale blue flame let's consider the chemical reactions in which it partakes in well hs h2s acts like an acid so it reacts with bases to form salt and water as in liberate water release water so when we have h2s it reacts with this and to produce sodium sulfate sodium sulfate as hs well, we have two there plus h2o and of course we we'll have two there so it results into this when it is also a precipitating agent a precipitating agent most of the so um, metallic form of um, sulfite of the sulfides are not the not soluble in water so it's usually precipitates substances peradventure you have them um, zinc um tetraoxosulfate six and you react it with you pass the gas through it you bubble the gas through it it to produce zinc sulfate and the tetraoxosulfate six acid so you see your zinc sulfate will precipitate out of it as a white solid also of course it also reacts with water and um, with air with oxygen it reacts with oxygen in the presence of oxi excess oxygen it will liberate so2 but in the presence of limited oxygen it will simply give you water and um sulfur so the the reaction is something like this of course we have two there and this will be three excess oxygen and the one with limited oxygen we have this as our results so there are a lot of um, things that this particular substance can do uh, it is also a reducing agent of course it possesses an hydrogen and that hydrogen easily is can be easily reduced it can be easily released so it is it acts as a reducing agent almost every time how do we test for the presence of um for how do we test that um, a gasola gas to be sure that it is but it is hydrogen sulfide very simple what we do is we get a, a filter paper and we had a um, lead nitrate Let two trioxo nitrates, let two trioxo nitrates five, you add it to the lead paper and you let it down into the cylinder where the gas is. Now it will give you a black coloration. The lead, the filter paper will turn black. And why is it turning black? Because of the presence of lead sulfate, which actually is black in color so this is going to be the output of what we have there so so we talked about the hydrogen sulfide let's talk about sulfides generally so when we talk about sulfides um, sulfides of course ex are metallic forms in which, um, when sulfur reacts with metals they form sulfides when sulfur reacts with metals, they form sulfides. We have different kinds of sulfides. Um, some of them are soluble in water, especially sulfides of the group one elements. That is, um, the nitrogen. I'm um, sorry, sodium sulfide. That's um, 
na s na 2 s also the same thing with um um potassium sulfide they are soluble in water while the other sulfides are not soluble in water but um sulfides like um calcium oxide um, calcium sulfides um iron sulfide lead sulfide um is lead among no 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 not lead sulfide manganese magnesium sulfide magnesium sulfide manganese sulfide they are soluble in act um, in dilute acid water that is active uh, acidated water when you add a little of uh, acid to the water they become soluble they generally sulfides are not soluble in water they are not soluble in water so apart from the fact that they are not soluble in water what other properties do they possess you see that you notice that sulfides do react with uh, other elements they react with other elements in such uh, elements and uh, in reactions such as combination reactions um or, or such as um, when you have na2 being exposed to oxygen of course a large volume of oxygen it results in the production of na2 so4 it results in the production of na2 so4 uh, they react also with hydrochloric acids they react with hydrochloric acids when you react them with hydrochloric acids I'm taking this as an example of course you have um, your sodium chloride and you have hydrogen sulfide thank you for bringing it to my notice you have sodium chloride and hydrogen sulfide being liberated the hydrogen sulfide is a gas so basically these are some of the basic um, experiments where we find the sulfides the sulfides do engage in let's um, consider the sulfur 4 oxide sulfur 4 oxide so when we talk about the some sulfur 4 oxide sulfur 4 oxide as so2 SO2, that's sulfur 4 oxide. Sulfur oxide is a colorless gas. It is um it exists naturally as a in as a in its gaseous state. Uh, it can be produced in the laboratory using this particular experiment that is stated on the board. We have um sodium tri trioxosulfate 5 reacted with hydrochloric acid. When we react this particular this then uh, it will give us some um, sodium chloride plus water plus sodium four oxide. So how do we what are the physical properties? What are the properties of the, the sodium four oxide? For the process of sodium four oxide includes one, it is a colorless, um, poisonous and very, very a very very irritating smell. It is a very very irritating list. It has a very irritating smell. It smells like um, a like a burning match. It smells like a burning match. It is very soluble in water and has a density of about two point five that of air, and it also liquefies easily. It liquefies easily. It can be liquefied. It only needs to be compressed to about three atmosphere. For it to liquefy all right what are the chemical properties yes we see that it reacts with bases to give salt and water so it is actually an acid on its own it also uh, can serve as a reducing agent it serves as a bleaching agent it engages in direct combination reaction and also it is a uh, an oxidizing agent in the presence of a much stronger reducing agent so what are the uses of um, the sulfur 4 oxide the sulfur 4 oxide has very many uses it is used in agriculture for making germicides and insecticides it is used in uh, it's also used in the production of um, tetraoxysulfate 6 acid um, and some other reagents it is used also 
in the um, it's used as a as an oxidizing agent. It's also, it can also function as a reducing agent, which means it is taking a double role, a dual role, depending on which you need in a, in a particular situation. It also serves as a bleaching agent. It serves as a bleaching agent. We use it in the bleaching of paper. Bleaching agent. Yes. Okay. Yes. We use it as a bleaching agent. We use it in the bleaching of paper. You see this our conventional paper in your ex in your exercise notebook. The ones that have this brown appearance, it was bleached using sulfur for oxide. And the one that has this very white and rather a, more, a thicker thinness, usually, that very, very white one is bleached using chlorine. So that's um, basically the other one, it, ox it can oxidize. That paper can get oxidized after it has been bleached. So that's the reason why it came up with that particular color. All right, so that's about everything for sulfur four oxide. Let's go ahead to look into what sulfur six oxide is about. Sulfur six oxides, that's SO three. They mix with water to produce um, our tetraoxosulfate six acids. Um, Let's talk about the properties. It is a needle-like crystal when it is at room temperature. It boils at 45 degrees Celsius. The physical properties include that um, it is a needle-like structure. It has a needle-like structure, a needle-like crystal when it is in its uh, at room temperature. It is a needle-like crystals. All right. Um, the physical properties of sulfur four oxide and um, sulfur six oxide rather. Um, it it has it's it at room temperature it has this crystal like needle like crystal form it exists in this needle like crystal and also it has a boiling point temperature of about um, 45 degrees Celsius yes about 45 degrees Celsius um, talking about the chemical properties chemical properties it reacts with water to produce hydrochloric uh, I'm sorry that's a tetraoxosulfate six acid it reacts with water to produce tetraoxosulfitic acid and it reacts with tetraoxosulfitic acid to produce holium. Holium. So these are the chemical um, properties of the substance. Uh, let's talk about other things. Yes, um, this is how it is being produced. It is being produced by the addition of oxygen to sulfur for oxide. Uh, naturally, sulfur so oxide will never mix up with oxygen because sulfur so oxide is kind of balanced in its own way. But for it to be able to react, a uh, particular catalyst, that's vanadium 5 oxide, would be used to force it to make it get to work. And this will be done under low pressure, a very low pressure and very, very high temperature. So you're going to require a low pressure, a high temperature, and the introduction of vanadium 5 oxide okay um let's discuss one or two of the uses of nitrogen um, sulfur 4 and um, sulfur 6 oxide so sulfur 6 oxide are used for making tetraoxosulfate 6 acids they are also used for um, certain chemical reactions they can also serve as bleaching agents they can also serve as bleaching agents okay um let's talk about the trioxo-oxo, the trioxo phosphate four acid. Let's talk about the trioxo sulfate um, so for four acid. The trioxo sulfate four acid is created by simply reacting sulfur four oxide with water. Now, this particular reaction is very very reversible. Immediately, you are converting as you are um, reacting the trioxo sulfate, um, the um, sulfur four oxide with the water. And it's forming the trioxo sulfate 4 acid. It begins the trioxo sulfate 4 acid begins to decompose back to the constituents almost immediately. So, what are the physical properties? What are the chemical properties? The physical properties of this particular acid is that it is a colorless, unstable acid. It's a colorless, unstable acid. It has a very strong um, SO2 smell 
and this acetyl smell comes from the decomposition of the acid as the acid is decomposing of course you'll be perceiving the gas that is coming out of it it also turns blue litmus red to show that it is actually an acid all right what are the chemical properties the chemical properties include the fact that it performs it acts just like every other acid it reacts with bases it reacts with trial oxocarbonates it reacts with bases to produce salt and water it reacts with trial oxocarbonates to produce um, salt water and liberates the um, the carbon dioxide uh, carbon oxide gas it also reacts with metals to produce salt and liberate hydrogen it reacts with air in the presence of excess air when air, excess air is made available um, sorry it reacts with oxygen present in air to form a more stable acid which is a trioxo sulfate 6 tetraoxosulfate 6 acid right it reacts with excess air in presence of air to form the tetraoxosulfate 6 acid um also it is a very very good reducing agent and a bleaching agent is a very very good reducing agent and a bleaching agent what are the uses and uh, it is used in the production of tetraoxosulfate 6 acid it is used as a bleaching agent, it is used as a bleach to remove um, for bleaching straw and other materials like that. Um, those are basically the uses for which we've, um, the uses we find for the trioxo sulfate 4 acid. So let's discuss the trioxo sulfate salts. When we talk about the um, trioxo um, when we talk about the trioxo sulfate 4s, trioxo sulfate 4 simply talk about the salts of the trioxosulfate for acid. To produce them, you can either react the um, sulfur for oxide directly with um, your base. That's, that's the major way we do produce them actually. React your sulfur for oxide with the base and you have your um, trioxosulfate salts and water will be produced. Now, most of the trioxosulfate salts, in fact, all of the trioxosulfate salts Except for ammonium trioxosulfate, potassium trioxosulfate, um, sodium trioxosulfate 4, and calcium trioxosulfate 4, apart from this 4, particular trioxosulfate 4, all the others are insoluble in water. It's only these 4 that are soluble in water. So, what other, what other properties do they have? They react with acids to produce other salts, water, and librates. Sulfur four oxide that is um, the, soil, the gas that is used to produce them. Also, when they are exposed to air, they react with the oxygen in air and produce a more stable salt, which is the calcium tetraoxosulfate six salt. Uh, they are very good reducing agents. They are very very good reducing agents. Now, these salts are used majorly for um, preparation of other salts uh, in the laboratory and testing of certain properties so how do we test them how do we test the presence of uh, trials uh, sulfates in a particular substance if it is in a soluble liquid simply add barium nitrates to it simply add barium nitrates to it the barium in the, the barium salt would precipitate now if there is an excess of barium nitrate in that particular substance it would actually go back again to form um, the barium nitrate but the sulfur the sulfur four oxide in the substance would evolve that is to liberate the sulfur four oxide in it so that's how we do tests for the tetra and uh, trioxosulfate fours so in the, in the, when you talk about um tetraoxosulfate six acid tetraoxosulfate six acid happens to be one of the most used some um, acids in the chemistry lab in the uh, study so let's look at how it is being produced it is being produced industrially via what is known as the contra and the contact process the contact process how does the contact process work the first thing you do is to get your sulfur and you burn it in the presence of air you burn your sulfur in, in the presence of air in fact in the presence of excess air and you keep burning it even after it has been completely burnt you still add more air so that it can move into the next 
stage of the reaction. Now, this next stage of reaction is reversible, but you keep you keep burning it and you pass the gas through uh, a tube and you bubble the gas through concentrated H2SO4. When you bubble it through concentrated H2SO4, it will form a relatively stable compound known as oleum, oleum which is HS, H2, S2, O7. H2, S2, O7. Now, when oleum is um, diluted with water, it forms the concentrated H2SO4. So that's how we go about the production of H2SO4 via the contact process. Well, the properties of H2SO4, it is this is a colorless viscous liquid and it has a density of about 1.83. That's about 1.83 um, gram per cm cube against one gram per cm cube of water. It is corrosive, very, very corrosive. It can burn one skin completely and it is hygroscopic. It has a very high affinity for water, so it absorbs water from the environment. That's why if you leave um, tetrahydrosulfate-6 acid in a particular place, it will actually drain the environment of the um, water, um, water vapor in its atmosphere. All right, what are the chemical properties of the tetrahydrosulfate-6 acid? The first thing is that it is an acid, so it is acidic. It performs all the acidic responsibilities. It reacts as all acids do. In other words, it reacts with bases to form salt and water. It reacts with metals to liberate hydrogen. It reacts with trioxocarbonate to liberate carbon four oxide and produce salt and water. Of course, it is also a very strong oxidizing agent. It's a very strong oxidizing agent. It gives away electrons freely and it has two electrons to give so it is a ready activate and uh, oxidizing agent it acts as a dehydrating agent it acts as a dehydrating agent um because of its affinity for water it absorbs moisture from every everything that it is exposed to in fact we use it for drying gases um also it displaces other acids from their salts it displaces other acids from their salts so if you want to produce a particular salt of um, say tetraoxosulfate a particular tetraoxosulfate salt you can simply get the salt of a particular another particular um, acid and you react it with the tetraoxosulfate 6 acid it would displace the other acid from the salt producing that other acids acid and that other salt the salt acid and its own salts. So these are the chemical properties of tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. Um, what are the uses of tetraoxosulfate 6 acid? It is used in the industry for making fertilizers and we also use it for making paints and um, dye pigments. In the making of paints and dye pigments, we also find it used in the purification of crude oil. Crude oil, uh, also, also in the refining of petroleum products, we use it. We use it also as a cleaning agent. We use it to, to clean substances, materials that we are about to electroplate because um, it would take off the rust. It will react to the rust, the oxidized, um, the um, oxidized uh, iron or oxidized material on the surface of the material that you want to. Uh, electroplates. It is also being used as a battery electrolyte. As battery electrolytes, our car batteries contain HTM. It contains tetraoxosulfate six acids. As well, it is used in the production of explosives, um, grenade, dynamite. We use um, tetraoxosulfate six acid in their production, and it is also very much used in the production of other components. Uh, other chemicals in the laboratory, especially when we have and um, want to create a, um, certain salts, we want to purify certain compounds. It is used in the drying of gases, in the drying of gases, almost every gas, except for basic gas, of course, except for basic gases, because if you pass a basic gas through it, it will simply react to the basic gas and yeah, form a new substance. All right, let's take a look at 
the trial, the trial to solve it six salts. And considering the trial, trial to, the trial to solve it six, um, how do we produce them? We we'll produce them um, through different methods actually. Um, but basically, all you have to do is react the tetrahydrate to sulfate six acid with their metals or their oxide or their trioxocarbonates. Their metals, their oxide, or their trioxocarbonates. Sometimes even with their salts or of other acids. So um, basically, the first three in the electrochemical series, that is the potassium, the calcium, and the uh, sodium, they do not require so much, they just require dilute hydrochloric, um, so, sorry, sulfuric acid, that is the H2SO4, it just require a dilute H2SO4, and they would react with it, uh, to either the, that's with, the met, uh, with the metal directly to liberate hydrogen, with their acid and with their hydroxide to liberate and to produce the salt and the acid with their trioxocarbonates to produce the salt and um, the salt sorry the salt and the oil and water with the trioxocarbonates to produce the salt water and carbon dioxide um when it comes to the other ones like magnesium and um, magnesium iron uh, aluminium those group you they require you to use a um, uh, more of their oxides more of their oxides and sometimes a little concentration you shouldn't be too dilute so if you have a concentrated um, a little concentration required and they will also give you the same results but when it comes to certain compounds like lead lead requires you to go more than just a little concentration lead requires you to actually bubble the um, bubble the this thing through it you have to heat up the lead and pour the acid over it and that's how lead would actually react with it but substances like gold silver um copper they actually need very concentrated h2so4 for their reaction to occur of course after heating so that's how to go about it and these particular substances um all of them they are soluble they are soluble in water except for this particular, um, the ones made by calcium, by lead, by barium, and by, um, by um, mercury 1. They are all soluble except for the one by, carb and by calcium, by lead, by barium, and by mercury 1. All the others are soluble in water, but these ones are insoluble in water, and all of them are anhydrous. They are all anhydrous. So they, when they are formed, for them to crystallize, they need to absorb a certain amount of water from the atmosphere or from anywhere. And they have a particular value of not water of crystallization. For iron, it absorbs seven water of crystallization. And when you heat it, the chemical reactions now, when you heat it up, it loses about six of it. If you continue heating it, it could lose the entire water of crystallization. If the heat is continued to be supplied, it would decompose to form iron oxide, that's iron 3 oxide, and um, SO4, and uh, sorry, that's sodium, uh, so, I'm sorry, sorry, that's um, sulfur 4 oxide and sulfur 3, um, 6 oxide gases. So this also is consistent with all other compounds of um, the all other compounds of the um, tetraoxo sulfates is consistent with all of them uh, except for um, potassium uh, sorry yeah potassium uh, um, sodium and um, uh, calcium except for potassium sodium and calcium which are very very stable salts formed from the tetraoxo sulfate 6 acid all right so what are the applications we use them also in the making of fertilizers we use them in the making of um, purifying agents for cleaning agents and some other industrial purposes as that all right let's take a quick look at hydrogen tetraoxo sulfate 6 hydrogen tetraoxo sulfate 6 so when we talk about the hydrogen h2 um, hydrogen tetraoxo sulfate 6 what we are simply talking about are acid salts. They are acid salts. They are formed by the incomplete. Um, they are formed by the chemical reaction in which the, the hydrogen form 
of the hydrogen of the um, acid was not completely displaced. The metal that replaced the hydrogen did not completely displace. That is, of course, usually when insufficient um, base is used to react uh, the tetraoxosulfate six acid. And this occurs especially when you are talking about when you are considering bases of um, um, mono monoatomic uh, bases. When you're talking, when you're using monoatomic bases, that is a basis of um, sodium, of potassium, and lithium, and the rest of them like that from the group one elements. Now, when this reaction occurs, they will still uh, uh, an hydrogen atom will still be left in the particular salt that is formed. And this makes the salt acidic. So when this particular substance is exposed to litmus paper, if it exposes it to litmus paper, if it puts a blue litmus paper into it, it turns blue litmus red. Even though it is a salt, it still acts as an acid. And also, if you, if you react it with a base for further, um, in further reaction with a base, the same base, it will now produce for you the proper salt and it will still produce water. So these are the properties of the hydrogen trioxocarbonate fours. Um, so in this particular lesson we looked at sulfur, uh, but before we go away from sulfur, I still want to point out one or two things. Sulfur has about four different oxidation numbers depending on what kind of sulfur you are working with. Um, sulfur can exist in the plus four states and that's where we we'll talk about sulfur, um, circumstances like the sulfuric acid, that is the tetraoxosulfate for acid. But let me quickly take a little time out to explain how do we calculate, how do we even know the nomenclature of this particular substance. Yes, we'll still talk about it when we get to IUPAC naming, that's, but before we get there, let's have an idea so that at least from now our minds can be prepared ahead of time. So basically, Hydrogen we know always carry an atomic, uh, always carry an ionization power of plus one. Oxygen we know normally carries an ionization power of minus two. So this particular compound is not carrying an is not carrying a sign above it. So it suggests that this particular system is balanced. So now we can start looking. We have one and two hydrogens, so we have two into brackets plus one. We have sulfur. We are trying to calculate the uh, ionization uh, ionization power of sulfur that's its ionization number that's let's call it that x and we have um oxygen we have four molecules of oxygen we know oxygen is always minus two and of course since there is no number above it everything should equal to zero everything should be equal to zero so when we multiply this out we have two plus x minus eight equals zero so x plus 2 minus 8 will be equal to 0. Plus 2 minus 8 gives us minus 6. That's x minus 6 equals 0. Now we can take our minus 6 to the other side. So our x equals 6. So that's plus 6. So in this particular substance, our x, our uh, sulfur, is actually at a plus 6 level. All right. Before we go on, hence the name tetraoxosulfate 6. Because there is the six, the six is indicating the level of oxidation of sulfur at that particular time. It is an it's oxidizing at six. That's plus six. Of course, sulfur can also oxidize at plus four. We've had the name time and over again. Um, I'll use the gas that's SO two. I'll prefer to work with SO two because it's more stable than the acid form. In the SO2, what do we have? Of course, we know our oxygen is minus 2, and we have 2 of it, so that makes it minus 4. And for the minus 4 to be balanced, it needs a plus 4. So, hence the name sulfur 4 oxide. The sulfur is 4. It, is, it, has, it has an oxidation state of 4, and it has oxygen next to it. All right. Um, well, uh, sulfur also exists at the state of zero. Sulfur also exists at the state of zero. Um, at the state of zero, you have a compound known as sulfur-8. Sulfur-8, or some, most, even most times, we see sulfur existing in free states in nature, 
which means even if we're not considering sulfur 8, we consider normal sulfur that is being harvested as being uh, mined from the earth crust. It exists in free state in nature, so it can actually be on its own as a solid in nature without reacting with any other thing. It can exist as a pure substance, so it is stable even in nature. And also we have the sulfur that is the minus 2. We have uh, certain occasions where our sulfur can act as a minus 2. A very good example of such an experience is um, sulfur, uh, hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide. Of course, we know hydrogen is plus 1, and we have two atoms of it, so that's plus 2, which means this sulfur must have been existing at minus 2. So, these are the four different oxidation numbers which sulfur can actually maintain. Um, when we look at other substances, we might mention, we should be talking about their oxidation numbers as well. But I want you to just keep in mind how we do calculate the oxidation numbers so that when you want to name compounds, of course, um, let me just take advantage of that to also explain the name of the tetraoxosulfate 6 acid. You see, the tetraoxosulfate 6 acid comes from the expression that we have up here. You will see we have the oxygen. And we have four oxygen. The word tetra simply goes with four. Tetra goes with four. So that's four and they say tetra oxo. That is four oxygen. So that tetra means four. The, that oxo is representing oxygen. So it says tetra oxo sulfate. Now that sulfate is the sulfur. Now what is the oxidation state of the sulfur? It is six. And then we call acid. That acid tells us that there is a component of hydrogen in it. Because if we want to define an acid, we say an acid is a, is a, is a, is a substance which when dissolved in water, releases hydrogen ion as the only positive ion. So hydrogen is the function of it that makes it an acid. The same thing we see in hydrogen chloride. We, see, we also talk about the hydrochloric acid. Uh, the hydrochloric acid also, we, you just... Because, because, of this, because of the fact that it comes from the hydrogen chloride gas. That's why we still have to further mention it as hydrochloric acid. So, if we check out other acids too, we notice that when we are naming other acids in the IUPAC names, we do not mention the hydrogens. We do not mention the hydrogen. The only one that we tend to mention the hydrogen is the hydrochloric acid. So, that's that about oxidation numbers and IUPAC naming. All right, in this particular lesson, we focused more on sulfur and its compound, and we talked about sulfur, the free existing solid state yellowish substance. We talked about the uses of sulfur, its application in medicine, in, uh, one, uh, in the production of other chemicals. We talked about hydrogen sulfide, then sulfides generally. We spoke on the sulfur 4 oxide, then sulfur 6 oxide, the unstable compound. We talked about the trioxosulfates. 4 acid, the unstable acid, and then we talked about the triazosulfates, 4 salts, uh, the salts of the, that unstable acid. Then we talked about the um, so contact process, the process through which we make the triazosulfate 6 acids. Then we talked about the properties of triazosulfate 6 acids, of course, and we looked at the triazosulfate 6 salts and hydrogen triazosulfate 6. We also point, took time out to emphasize on the oxidation numbers of sulfur and naming of substances using the IUPAC naming system. All right, in a few seconds, some questions will be displayed on your screen to test your understanding of what has been taught in this lesson. Please do well by answering them. And if you have any difficulty in any, other, any part of the, um, the lesson, you can go over the lesson, the entire lesson over again, one more time to get a good knowledge of what is being taught. Thank you.